So let's take a walk back in time. I have been thinking about this for a while, about generations. I look on my YouTube channel and I see that the majority of people who are watching my YouTube channel, and it gives me all sorts of, you know, numbers and figures, are people who are mostly 20 to 45, 60%, more than half of you are female. Uh, a lot of you are in the United States, followed by the United Kingdom, followed by the Philippines, and then Canada and Australia. And it's really interesting looking at the demographics. But what I've been thinking about is that so many of you have absolutely no knowledge of the things that I think everybody has knowledge of, and there's nothing wrong with that because I certainly wouldn't have the knowledge of somebody who, let's say, was born in the 1900s. I, I, they would be talking about things and people and places and events that were very important at the time, maybe world changing. I would have no clue. And there's just so many facts out there. This last summer in August, and let me, let me explain this again, that I had I don't remember, I mentioned Lizzie Borden on one of my Facebook pages or something, and I can't remember why. And people were like, I don't get it. Who's Lizzie Borden? What's a Lizzie Borden? Well, they didn't get it. And to me, not knowing who Lizzie Borden is, is like, just, that's just amazing. How could you not know what Lizzie Borden is? It's like not knowing what World War I or World War II was or the American Civil War. It's just, Everybody should know those kinds of things. Do you know who Edgar Allan Poe is? And, you know, I mean, just, you just think everybody knows these things. And people would say, well, Susan, she, that was before my time. And I'm like, well, hey, I, it was before my time also, but I know who Lizzie Borden is. I uh, went to a couple of different lectures and I asked the audience, I said, you know, how many people here know who Lizzie Borden is? And more than half had never heard of her. And I find that really interesting. So what I want to do today, and maybe over a series of other videos, is I want to go back to some of the some of the cases in mentalism, not mentalism, but in in um I want to go back to the days of things that we assume everybody knows in this world of psychic explains all of this mediumship things this is this has been around for oh my gosh ages and ages but a lot of us are still not have the background that other people do so i think it's good to revisit these things change but then people are pretty much the same over time i'm going to show you a three minute clip I don't own this or anything like that, but I'm going to show you a three minute clip. Uh, this is a man named Orson Welles. And this was a video in an interview he made probably back in the 1970s, maybe 1980s. He lived from 1915 to 1985. Orson Welles it was an actor and a director. He was a phenomenon. He was the person who did War of the Worlds that radio drama that was so immensely just life-changing for people where they, he did a radio show and it made it sound like the Martians were landing and people were freaking out because it seemed like Martians were landing and they didn't have enough disclaimers. And they're saying, this is just a radio program. You know, we're just fun in you. So Orson Welles is also the man who did just incredible movies, the most incredible, the most amazing movie of all time. It still gives me chills thinking about it is Citizen Kane. Oh man, you guys do not, if you haven't seen Citizen Kane, run out and see it. It's, it's, it's visually beautiful. It's incredible. They don't make movies like this anymore. Anyway, this isn't meant to be a plug on Citizen Kane and Orson Welles. You can check them out, look them up on Wikipedia. These, these are, um, touchstones in the world that we should know so orson wells has this three minute video as i said it's about cold reading and he describes what cold reading is he describes 
um, it in a way that I probably would take a thousand words more than he does to explain it. He does it in such a wonderful way. And what he says is the same, exactly the same as it happens, you know, then to now. There's no different. He's making general statements, but they're the same general statements that um, mediums and psychics use today to um, cold read people. There might be a little more up-to-date things that he could have said if he knew of um, telephones and computers, <clears throat> telephones and computers and that kind of thing, but it's really the same. Um, and don't overestimate. Do not think it's silly because he gives the most obvious of the statements. Because I hear these blatant, obvious things all the time. All the time, you guys, in mediumship today, right now, I could go on to one of these channels and get a reading and there's not saying anything better than the standard tropes that he's getting, that he's going to give you an example of. It's, it really is just that common. So let's look at this clip and then I want to come back and I'm going to talk to you about a couple things real quick and then we'll be done. All right. So make sure you get a chance, like this video. If you find this interesting, please uh, share the video and um, please uh, leave comments. I like to see comments, hit the little like button. I'd appreciate that whenever you get a chance, as well as hitting the alert button when you subscribe. So, you know, when I'm uploading another video. Oh, and I want to say, just ignore the laughter. The, this is recorded in front of a live audience and I found the laughter just really odd because what he's talking about are very serious subjects. He's explaining something, like I said, in a way I wouldn't be able to do. And the audience, for some reason, thinks it's funny. So just ignore the laughter. I, I once, uh, you know, I'm a, a magician and uh, uh, I got interested in mind reading and, and fortune telling, fake fortune telling, you know. And I got to know a lot of old fakes who had retired as millionaires, you know, and they told me their secrets, how you do it. They have things that are called cold readings. Oh, what's that? A cold reading is you warm up the sucker by telling him things that he says, how could he ever know that, you see? You say, you know, between the ages of uh, 13 and 15, you had a, a great change came in your life. But that happens in everybody's life. <laughs> But, but he says, he came in and told me things I already see. You've got a scar on your knee. Everybody fell down and has a scar on their knee. Those are cold readings, you see? I have a, now, I have a scar on my knee. Sure How you did do. you know that? Yeah, you see? <laughs> Just something bigger than myself. Yeah. Well, now, the point about this is that you, after they're warmed up, they're amazed by this knee bit and the rest of it, they start telling you. Because you just say, is it sin? You see from their face it is or it isn't. And then you tell it back and they say, how did he do it? You see? So I was bored. I was playing in Kansas City with Catherine Cornell one time. And uh, we didn't have any matinee on Wednesday. So I hired a, a room and put Dr. Swami fortune teller, you know? $2, two dollar readings. And for uh, the whole day, they came in. And I, each one, because I felt guilty about it at the end, I said, I'm not going to take your money. You know, because I but couldn't he, have really taken For a whole day, I was a fortune teller, faking. But then there began to happen to me the thing that does happen to fortune tellers, and which is the occupational disease of fraudulence, fortune tellers. Uh -huh. And they have a name for it. It's called becoming a shut-eye. And a shut-eye in the argo of these crooks is the fellow who believe, begins to believe himself. You see, and you make these wild guesses. One of them explained to me, he says, supposing you're a night clerk in a hotel, and when you get the job, first of all, a fellow comes in, wants a single room, you look at how good his luggage is, how good are his shoes, and you tell him there's a room in the court, there's no room, or yes, sir, depending on various <laughs> pieces of evidence. He says, you've been a night clerk long enough, you glance and you tell him. You've been a night clerk a little longer, and you don't have to look. You've seen it, but you have... The computer in here has made all of those deductions without your being conscious of it. So the mind reader gets so that he, without thinking, does that, and then they say it's true. And a woman came in to me at the end of my, my career as a, as a fraudulent fortune teller. 
in a bright print dress and sat down looking perfectly all right and I said you've lost your husband last week and she burst into tears she had and then I quit <laughs> that was terrible. Yes, it's one of those things. Undoubtedly, it's not psychic. Undoubtedly, there was evidence of a tragedy. There was all kinds of things that went into the computer and got processed without me crookedly thinking what I'm going to say to her. And that's how it works, I think. That's fascinating. Isn't and, that you, funny? and you get f sort of f five spooky premonitions a like year. Like that, and then, you know, yes, I do. And I'm sure they're all spooky like that in some kind of funny way. I suppose I looked at Una and said, this, you know, she's just, Una is the, exactly the, the girl that would be happy with, with Charlie, I suppose. And instead of thinking, maybe you'll meet him, I just, what did I lose? I said, you're going to marry him. And she did. <laughs> okay, that, it's, it's fascinating, isn't it? He's, he's, um just an interesting character and he does he describes it so well so to sum up um cold reading is what most psychics do my expertise is in hot reading which is they obviously have some information about you ahead of time and it's all mixed together the um, even people who hot read still cold read as well they're making statements about people but to really understand what is going on in mediumship not only does it help to watch uh, the videos that we have, this community we've started developing here on this channel, but there are a few books that I think that are required reading. Now, maybe you don't like reading books. Um, there are some other ways of getting some of this information. So there's three. And these are what I would call the, the best of the best and they explain it better than anything. So the first one is this book. It was written in 1947, I think. It's called Nightmare Alley. It is about a mentalist, uh, 1946. It is about a mentalist. William Lindsay Gresham is the name of the author. Now, this was produced as a movie, I believe, in the 1950s. And it had a kind of a feel-good ending. It's really dark still. It's uh, incredible. But then it just was released as a, a movie by Del Toro, the famous uh, director. So there's a movie out in the last two years. I think it was released in 2021. And it's incredible. And it's very true to the book. So if you want to just watch the movie, there is a great movie. If you want to read the book, there is a book. And there's also, like I said, a 1950-something movie that's a little different and it's about a mentalist who rises to fame um he's a um in a circus and he is the guy who's the kind of guy who like bites the chicken the heads off the chickens and stuff i mean it's really awful but it talks about the tricks of the trade and this is really reveals a lot of the tricks we still see them today just in a little bit different format from the 1930s 1920s 1940s fabulous fabulous reading the second book i always recommend is psychic mafia this is by uh, lamar keen this book has um is out of production you can't get it unless you find it like in a used bookstore or something like that it's not a hard to read book it has large format print if you do find it it's a quick read it was from the 70s and this is a man who was uh, got himself into the business of mediumship in um, a, a community down in Florida that is, uh, this talks about all the tricks that are done at that time to convince people that they were, they were uh, communicating with the dead. And so it's a tell-all book. It, it just explains everything that was going on and the tricks. Again, these are the same tricks, same methods being used. Um, they are, um, you know, same same cash cells, same same ideas. Except now, of course, we have computers. It'd be much more much easier to do it now than it was then. So this is a tell-all book of things that happened in the fifties, sixties, I believe, into the seventies. Um, you can get this as an audio book. Um, no, not an audiobook. The BBC, if you if you don't want to read it, the BBC did a audio uh, version 
where they broke down the story and told it using actors. And there's like, I think there's six episodes and you can listen to it and it gives you a lot of background. So if you don't want to go into the great detail of reading the book, you can listen to it. Um, look up uh, Psychic Mafia, uh, Lamarckine, BBC. And you should be able to find that. I think it's only been out maybe two years. It's it's pretty recent. But this is also another must read if you want to understand what's happening in mediumship. These are all fascinating to know. The last book, and there are other books I would recommend, but these are the three standard you must have to understand the psychic business and how the more things change, the more things remain the same is Psychic Blues. This is my boyfriend, Mark Edward. He wrote this book. It's Confessions of a Conflicted Medium. And I helped by, I don't know what I did. I reread the book a bunch of times and tried to make sure it was edited. right. <laughs> and I took that photo. Isn't that nice? Beautiful photo. If you look at this, you'll see there's a third hand right here. See? One, two, three. It's a great cover. I just absolutely adore it. This is going out of print. Um, I think it was made in 2013, 2014 by Feral House. They are only releasing it um, in a Kindle, you know, like a, a that kind of thing. But you can get this book on Audible or any of those listening places. It is longer the um read by mark edward himself it's longer because when they edited this book out they took out a lot of his life history his life story and so you know they condensed it to put it into a book a print form and whenever i think it was maybe five years ago mark decided to make it as, into an audio book and he read it but he read it from the original unedited so there's there's all kinds of personal details about what was going on in his life at the time. I didn't know him at the time, but the reason why I recommend this book is because the other two books are, you know, the twenties, thirties, forties, and then the forties, fifties, sixties, seventies. And this is going into the eighties and the nineties because Mark Edward was, and is still a mentalist. And that is a person who is a magician, but the wing of magic that he does is the wing that makes it look like you're psychic so a lot of the tricks that mentalists do are the same tricks that psychics use which is why i have so much insight into what um, psychics do now i think a lot of psychics are pretty darn lazy these days and they're not going to the trouble that that a mentalist would to fool you what um this talks a lot about is his years in the 900 lines you know remember the you know, the, the times where you would call up three ninety nine dollars a minute and people would call and they would get a psychic or astrologer or a palm reader or whatever they got. Yeah, palm readers. And so he worked in that era for a long time. Now, he was a skeptic the whole time. And he went in and did this for a long time, learned the trade. He even did infomercials for um, uh, uh, friends and family that channel that they had i can't think of what it's called all of a sudden psychic friends network i'm sorry psychic friends network remember miss cleo that was a rival i think but um it was the same industry where you where where nobody was really psychic and how it, how they were able to perpetuate it what the business model was in the psychic world what was actually going on plus mark you know, he lived in the la area and so he performed a lot of different uh, celebrities' homes, uh, Eddie Murphy and, and different people. He's done readings for lots and lots and lots of famous celebrities. And in like a more of a Halloween kind of feel. So he wasn't saying he was real. He was a, a mentalist, an actor of sorts, a magician playing a part of a person who's a psychic and and. The reason why he has a conflicted medium on here is because he actually really enjoys um, the the world of the psychic, the world of that that time um, of um, it's like a play or an act, and he he enjoys that giving readings. He loves giving readings. He's really good at doing tarot and and palmistry and whatever else you want to do, but. 
you know, we know, and he knows, and he, the, the audience should know he's just acting. It's, it's a, but it's so good that as or- Orson Welles explained in here, you start to, you start to believe your own um, BS after a certain point in time, because you, you, you get so many people saying, oh my gosh, you're amazing. Your, your skills, or you told me this thing and it helped me out so much. You, you kind of get to a point where you think, well, am I real? <laughs> so you're going to have, Mark's done a ton of interviews and you can find them all over the internet. So if you're interested in learning out more about Mark Edward, you can find it obviously. But um, I mean, I don't get any money from the sales of these books, especially since this book is almost out of print now. And the audio audible book is, um, I mean, maybe he'll take me to dinner or something. <laughs> if we sell 10 books, I don't know. No, he won't. <laughs> I don't, I don't see any of the, I don't see any of it. You can't make money, trust me, on in the world of the that I'm in skepticism or what marks and there's there's no money in it. Um, so those are the three books that I would highly recommend. Anything by um, Ben Radford, anything by Kenny Biddle, anything by Harry Houdini or uh, James Randi, Joe Nickel. Those are all must reads if you want to get into it further. And I have some reviews up here on my channel of some of the books. They're fascinating and um i mean i've thumbed through these things and read through them many times but just like what orson wells was saying cold reading is is a skill the more you do it the more you're able to do it and it flows out naturally you don't stumble over your words and the mediums that i review on my channel these people have been doing readings for for years they probably have 10,000 readings there there's they're glib they're quick they're fast at this it, it feels natural because it is natural they don't even think about it i've seen john edward um do readings over the radio and my gosh it's it's as if he could be doing a crossword puzzle and uh and just talking and he's not they're like <laughs> he doesn't even need to think anymore it's he his mouth opens and this stuff comes out and same with uh, a lot of the other psychics have been doing this for 30, 40, 50 years. So anyway, I want to give you that history. I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please like and please share. Um, please leave me comments. Let me know what you think of cold reading. Let me know if you've heard or read any of these books. Um, if you have other books that you think we should recommend, you know, I've got a bookshelf's all over here you can't see them on camera full of books and there's a lot out there on the history of mediumship as well as the history of psychics and you know this kind of thing but for the history the recent history i think those three books are the best to get right now audio movie whatever you want to do